Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopist. In this short tutorial, let's have a quick look at the median filter, which is excellent for denoising, especially the salt and pepper type of noise. In the previous tutorial, we looked at Gaussian uh, filter or Gaussian blur that uh, is also very effective at denoising, but we saw that it completely failed at denoising salt and pepper noise. And let's look at how median can actually fare with that type of noise. Now, before jumping in, a quick lesson on median, right? We all know what mean is. Mean is nothing but the average of all numbers. And the typical example that people use is just, uh, okay, let's say you live in a neighborhood where uh, your house is, ranges anywhere between 350K, 425,000, and so on. All the way, you probably have a couple of rich guys living in your neighborhood, well, somewhere up the hill, uh, whose houses are worth 2.2 million, 3.2 million, and so on. Now, if you look at the mean of all of this, then it comes down to 931,000. So that scares you, right? Okay, so your house, uh, probably you would be thinking that, okay, 931 is the average house price. That's why when you look at housing prices, you always look at the median house prices, right? So if you look at the median of these values, then it comes to about 512,000, which represents this spread much better than the mean itself. Again, this is literally statistics 101 that you probably learned in your fifth grade or sixth grade. It's worth mentioning this because if you translate this to an image, if you look at an image, for example, here, uh, artificially added a whole bunch of salt and pepper noise, okay? You can see a whole bunch of dark pixels, bright pixels. In fact, if I zoom in, you can see in this region, which is supposed to be homogeneous, okay, homogeneously gray, you see a few wild spikes of uh, bright pixels showing up. And again, why are these salt and pepper noise showing up? Well, for many reasons. And primary source of salt and pepper noise is, uh, especially in older electronics, uh, that you use to capture your images where analog to digital conversion has some issues, okay? Or if your electronics is not working fine. So whatever the case, you have these wild spikes and uh, uh, Gaussian blur, was okay, but not great at cleaning this type of noise. And uh, uh, technically, the median filter should do a better job because if you look at these pixels, okay, so all of these are about homogeneously gray, except this one pixel that shows up as a bright pixel. Now, if you apply a three by three, uh, a kernel and actually look at the median value, which means we are actually looking at all the surrounding values surrounding this, this central pixel and we are actually including the central pixel obviously we are actually looking at the median value right there so the median of all of these numbers inside this red box is 140 so if you replace that 255 with 140 you would get a very nice uniform homogeneous image okay so this is a uh, a quick pictorial graphical representation so let's jump into uh, the python and write these two lines of code okay but first, let's quickly run this Gaussian that we still have the code from our last tutorial. So here again, we are opening the same salt and pepper noisy image and we are applying the Gaussian blur that's available in OpenCV and also in scikit image. And we are reading this image as float because again, especially for scikit image, it likes to play with numbers in float. So whenever you're applying any of the functions from scikit image, floating point is uh, very, very useful. And sometimes it may force you to use floating point. On the other hand, OpenCV sometimes forces you to use 8-bit uh, uh, and not floating point. So, but, but you'll have to figure it out while running the code uh, when it throws some error. So let's go ahead and run this, and uh, you'll see the input image here with uh, uh, a whole bunch of artificially added salt and pepper noise. And let's go back to the OpenCV filtered image. Seems to be a bit cleaned, but you still see the salt and pepper all over the place. Same with scikit image Gaussian. This is why Gaussian is the, not the best way to do denoising for salt and pepper type of noise. So that's why we started working with the median. So let's go ahead and copy the header libraries here and instead of Gaussian, we will be importing median, okay? And then let's go ahead and read the images. There you go. Um, in fact, let's only stick with one image, okay, for now. And I'll still call my image equals to salt and pepper noise, so it's easy for me to type uh, later on, 
okay so now let's uh, what do we need so let's go ahead and uh, apply our median using cv2 okay open cv and how do we define this this is very easy cv2 dot median blur my image and the the uh, kernel size so let's actually run the code until this point to see if everything is okay if not we'll have to figure out why okay um, okay as suspected it says unsupported format or combination of formats in function whatever blah 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 it's not very clear but I have a suspicion that that's because the numbers here uh, for my image are floating point and it probably wants uh, uh, it, it uh, I'm, I'm very confident that it's looking for uh, it's looking for 8-bit uh, integers because uh, it's a median value right so it likes to work with these so let's go ahead and uh, uh, read this using cv2 I could have just removed that image as float but uh, it's okay cv2 dot read and let's add a zero indicating that this is uh, read it as a grayscale uh, image so now let's go ahead and run this up to this point if everything is fine then let's move on okay that looks fine so it worked fine now for a scikit image uh, the way you do this is actually describe from sk image dot morphology you have to import disk uh, think of it as uh, defining a kernel size except you, now you're defining a disk size okay so now you'll see median using sk image is my median because I've already imported that up here okay I'm just calling it down here and apply the median onto my image using a disk size of 3 for now okay and what mode mode equals to constant again I covered this topic in the last couple of tutorials the mode equals to constant is nothing but it adds an extra column and an extra row towards the end of this image meaning the last pixel how do you deal with the last pixel by adding a constant value or by copying the value of the last pixel and adding an additional column and a row you can easily take care of these and uh, let's actually add uh, a value of 0.0, .0 which makes it a floating point but scikit image can handle that that's okay okay so that's it so the way we apply median in OpenCV is cv2 dot median blur your uh, numpy array or your image here and the kernel size and in OpenCV, this is again media ah, sorry then scikit image dot filters uh, import median and your input image your disk size and your mode and so on okay now let's go ahead and uh, look at these images so cv2 in fact instead of typing all of that let's come back here copy this I'm feeling a bit lazy today so cv2 filter sk image filter is fine and for cv2 this is median using cv2 there you go and for sk image let's go ahead and copy and paste this let's have a look at our images now so there you go isn't that neat there you go so on the left hand side that's the input original image with a whole bunch of salt and pepper and look at the cleaned image this looks as uh, my original image on on which I actually added the salt and pepper noise so this image is from uh, CV2 and the one on the right hand side is from scikit image in fact the one on the left looks very realistic the one on the right started to look a bit cartoonish uh, uh, the one from scikit image but OpenCV looks very uh, it's, it's it's almost as if uh, it's like magic you know just remove this top layer of uh, salt and pepper so this is the power of median again uh, people you you would love to use I know uh, you know some sort of a deep learning based denoising and all of that but for most denoising as long as you know the strengths of these individual filters the regular traditional approach of using Gaussian or non-local means or median filters you know these are much far more effective and quicker than uh, doing any sort of deep learning okay so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial I hope you learned something from this tutorial so please subscribe to my channel to keep me encouraged uh, to create more such videos and uh, let's meet again in uh, the next tutorial with a new topic thank you very much